Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind, a channel solely focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left. The rise of communism in America. It's a very curious phenomenon, to say the least. You know, it seems as though we have a very, very privileged group of young individuals who all seem to fit in the same kind of box. You know, overly privileged, upper middle class to upper class suburban kids with no actual life experience who feel as though they've got it all figured out. But most importantly, I'd argue people who don't exactly ask too many questions or maybe aren't interested in questions, they're more interested in confirmation bias. You know, they've convinced themselves that communism is the way. Ma equity. Everybody deserves the same thing. Equal distribution of resources. It sounds nice, it makes you feel good, but of course it doesn't stand up to scrutiny. In fact, it doesn't stand up to the slightest of scrutiny. And you know, I think a lot of these young socialist types, these young communist types, ought to start asking some questions about their own political ideology, but that would probably defeat the purpose of being a young communist revolutionary because when they do ask questions, well, they get answers that aren't exactly what they're looking for. Let's just say that. There's a clip that's currently bouncing around Twitter that's gone absolutely viral, already raking in over 2 million views, and that's just on the Twitter X platform. Let me show you this hilarious moment. We got some stuff to get into, so let's roll the tape. All right, folks, so I guess we got another one of those questions. How to dismiss mantle communist belief with one single question. Back then it was, how are you going to pay for it? You know, sounds lovely, but how are you going to pay for it? That tended to pretty much give you a guaranteed W, make whatever communist you're interacting with look like a complete blabbering fool. But now there's a new question, and that question is, can I still have a PS5? In your world of communism, are PlayStation still a thing? Can I still play my video games? Take a look. Final question to you, uh, Professor Wolf. Uh, under your system of worker cooperatives, would I still get my PlayStation 5? <laughs> Absolutely. You'd have to struggle a little bit for it. You'd have to talk to your fellow workers. You'd have to talk about the distribution of income. You'd have to compare your desire for PlayStation uh, against all the other other interests of all the other people. It wouldn't be something you worked out on your own with your particular boss uh, in any way. It would have to be a democratic decision. You'd have to come to terms uh, with that the way you do with democratic uh, decisions uh, now in our society to the extent uh, that we have them. Uh, Not exactly the answer I think leftoids were looking for. You have to be so incredibly naive, frankly kind of a dummy, to fall for the communist grift. And I mean, the fact that the question even had to be asked, in this beautiful communist utopia, will I still have my PlayStation? No, of course you won't. That's not how communism works. The real way communism works is essentially, you'll own nothing and be happy. Firstly, without capitalism, there is no PlayStations. Without innovation, without technological industry, without market forces and investments, we'd be living in a desolate society. That's the most obvious point. But the second obvious point is that no, you can't have anything in a world of communism because the state declares what you can and can't have, what you can and can't do, how resources are allocated, where you're allowed to work, where you're going to be, where you can live. You have nothing. You know, leftoids have convinced themselves that communism is this utopic vision of the world where young consumers can just stay at home smoking weed all day, playing video games while watching Twitch streams and just having everything delivered to them. A government that provides them literally everything. A government will provide you a home, a higher standard of living, video game consoles. They'll give you guaranteed universal income. That gives you also discretionary income, where you can go and buy all of these fancy things thanks to daddy government. Except the question is, who's going to produce those things? If there aren't market forces, if there aren't transactions, if people aren't being paid for their labor, well, a lot of these industries won't exist. The government government will stick to the bare bones necessities like farming wheat and rice probably spending most of their resources focused on stopping the inevitable. And what's the inevitable, you ask? Well, you know, just a little thing like mass starvation. Without monetary incentive, nothing gets done. If people are simply paid to stay at home all day and to simply exist to live a life of entitlement, well, not much is going to get done, right? Not many people are going to work grueling hours to become software engineers, doctors, lawyers, you name it, if there's no monetary incentive. In other words, we're going to have a shortage of literally everything unless we're somehow coercing people. No, but what's probably going to end up happening, of course, is the people who do end up putting in more work will rise in society. What does that sound like? Well, basically the same thing you get with capitalism, except in the world of communism, it's only a very select few. You're going to have the haves and the have-nots, those who are chosen to provide value in society and those who are simply there to kind of exist 
provide labor and not starve. In other words, all you young leftoids who have developed absolutely no skills and provide no value to society who are basically at the bottom of the totem pole, well, you're likely to remain there even in this, you know, utopic vision of communism that you keep trying to sell the world. It's crazy how these young people haven't thought these things through. Ooh, capitalism, the root of all evil in society. Meanwhile, the reality is that capitalism has been the strongest force for good, positive change, in human history. Starvation has been nearly eliminated. The advancements in technology have increased the standard of living for billions of human beings, and the medical innovations, over the last century or so especially, have probably saved hundreds of millions of people. But capitalism is to be demonized. Why exactly? Well, according to these young leftoids, because capitalism is unfair, there's the haves and then the have-nots. Another idiotic argument. That's not capitalism, that's called human nature. No matter what the system is, there's always going to be the elites, and let's call them the plebeians. The only difference is, in the world of capitalism, anybody can become an elite. We all have the ability to rise up and make something of ourselves and become people of influence. In fact, in the world of capitalism, a ton of people get to rise up that ladder. In the world of communism, however, no, it's just a very select, privileged few who essentially become oligarchs, run all the industry, run everything, and then everybody else becomes a slave. That is the reality. You know, if we were to sum up the interaction, or I guess the question and answer that I played earlier in the clip between these two enlightened individuals, if we were to distill it to its core concept, essentially the way it went was, I'm a lazy millennial who likes staying home all day playing video games and grifting on this whole communism thing because I don't want to work and I just want free crap. Will I still be able to keep my PS5? And the response was, well, if you're important enough, if you're significant enough, if you can make a good enough argument, then yeah, maybe. In other words, only the communist oligarchs and their families, friends, and children will have the privilege to have access to these kinds of things and everybody else well tough luck i don't see how these young people don't see the errors in their ways you know as if communism hasn't been tried a million times before it's failed every time but of course as we know that's not real communism no real communism is the type that exists that gives everybody free crap makes everybody live the life of a lavish millionaire and guarantees playstation 5s for all yeah sorry to break it to you young leftoids that world doesn't exist that is a stoner gamer pipe dream. And trust me when I tell you I understand it because, as ashamed as I am to say this, been there, done that. I was that dumb 19 year old kid just playing video games. I thought I was smart, saying things like computers can just be provided to everybody. That's what Marxism is about. Everybody getting everything for free, everybody having the same thing, being on an even playing field. But when you think about the logistics, it simply doesn't make sense. Who's going to make these computers? Who's going to mine the resources? How can we possibly create a supply chain and pipeline to give everybody everything in an effective manner without global society essentially turning towards fascism? The only way you can possibly achieve that is by indentured servitude, slavery, you know, the greater good of the state. I hate to break it to you, leftoids, but the only way you're keeping your PS5 and your la-di-da communist pipe dream is on the backs of slaves. Freaking wake up and smell the coffee. The most recognized communist professor essentially just said the quiet part out loud. Communism sucks. Anyways, that's pretty much what I got for you guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to leave a like and possibly subscribe to the channel. Of course, you know that we'd love to have you here. Thanks for watching, friends, and I will see you on the next one.